As we continue on through the process of developing our operating system, we're gonna find a few problems using GCC with the flags that we have set up right now, like hyphen M32, for instance. It is actually more ideal for us to set up something called a cross compiler. And the main reason that we do this is to make a version of GCC and all the related utilities that are gonna target the correct platform. So CPU, operating system, uh, the fact that we don't have any system libraries currently available, these types of things. So it's gonna make our compiling process a fair bit easier. It's also going to fix a lot of weird errors that pop up only if we're using some of these different flags like M32. You'll see some interesting ones will come up if you continue using the old method of compiling. Things like division is not going to work out of the box because it's gonna to try to use 64-bit versions of a division. And generally a lot of like string-based errors will pop up where strings will end up blank rather than loading data. So it's best to take care of this uh, sooner than later. So the very first thing that we need to address is that you need a few different things to build all of these different components. So the first thing you'll need to install is Bison, then Flex. Now I'm not installing these because I already have them installed. I just want to show you which ones you generally need. You need lib gmp3 hyphen dev. You need lib mpc dev. You'll need lib mpfr dev. And you'll need text info. Once you've installed all of these, what you're going to do is you're going to export a few different paths. The first one is going to be what I'm going to call prefix, and that is going to be the location where you would like to store your cross compiler. So I'm going to store mine at user opt cross. Okay, so we'll export that. Next, we're going to export the target. This is going to be the target architecture that we want to build a GCC for. So i686 elf is the one that we're going to use. This is the 32-bit architecture. Finally, we're gonna to need to export a path, which is going to be equal to the prefix slash bin, and we'll put that into path like this. With that set, we're now good to go, and we're ready to set up our installation. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to download a few different things. We need to download a build or bin utils and GCC. To get each of these, we're just gonna to go to each of their sites and use their git clone commands. So here's the GCC site. This is going to be the clone command that you're going to use to clone the GCC source code. For bin utils, what you can do is you can head to the bin utils website. And on here, you'll see this git clone for bin utils. Now again, I've already cloned these onto my computer because they take a long time to actually clone. So I'm just gonna show you generally the way that we set up and build each of these components. So to build bin utils, what you're going to do is you're going to make a new folder. You can call it whatever you'd like. I didn't mind uh, build bin utils. And you're going to cd into this directory. Now to build this, what you're going to do is you're going to start by running the following command. You're going to run bin utils gdb slash configure. And you're going to provide the target that we have made in our export path. So this target, you're going to put in your prefix, which is, again, another value that we have defined. We're going to define it with sysroot as a flag. We're going to define disable NLS and disable W error. These are just some common flags that you would typically use in this process. When you run this, it's going to go through this configuration process to set up all of the components to be able to work with these different flags that we've set. Once that's completed, you're simply going to run the commands make. And then once that's completed, you're going to run make install. That's going to build the bin utils. Okay. So that's what we need to do for these particular components. Now for GCC, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, create a folder to store all of our different uh, build pieces in. I then mind build GCC. So we're going to go into build GCC you're going to do another configure, right? So you're gonna do GCC slash configure. You're gonna provide a target as the target that we defined and a prefix as well as the prefix that we defined. We're going to again, disable NLS. We're going to enable languages. Now you can specify just C. I often like to specify C and C++ just in case I want to use C++ at some point in this process. And we're going to compile this without headers. So those are the pieces that we're going to specify here. 
Once that is set up, it's gonna create all of the build uh, components that we require. And then we're going to do, like before, we're just gonna run some makes. So we're gonna make all GCC, make all target lib GCC right after that. And then you're going to make install GCC. And then we're gonna make install target lib GCC. Once you've done that, you should have GCC now set up. Now, of course, running these commands on your computer is gonna take a bit more time. On my computer, it took nearly an hour to build all of this, and that's why I'm just showing you the commands and not actually building it live here on video because it just takes a really long time to do. So generally, you know, it'll probably take about an hour to go through this process. Once it's done, you will have GCC available. And where it's available is at user opt cross, which is this directory that I specified here. And then it's inside of bin, and then it's inside of i686 elf gcc. So if I do this and specify, I think, like a version like this, ah, that one doesn't work. I think maybe it's hyphen hyphen version. There we go. You'll see that it actually shows me the version of gcc that I currently have installed. So you can see that it is actually i686. So that's exactly what we wanted. And the version that I have right now is 14.0.0. This one seems to work pretty well for my build processes. Now what you're gonna do after this is you're gonna come into your make file here and you're gonna make a few changes. Those changes are gonna be the following. First, we're gonna set up GCC to point towards that GCC directory that we've created. That way we're using the right version of GCC. Okay, so we're gonna do elf and then uh, GCC like this. And then the flags are actually gonna change. We don't need any of these flags anymore. The only flags that we actually need is F freestanding, and then W all, W extra. These are just different flags for warning levels. And then I like to add in hyphen G, which is the debug flag. And then sometimes people add in O2 to set an optimization level. You can target a specific optimization level in GCC for your operating system to run in. This is gonna give us at least some of the compiler optimizations that would be you know, good for performance generally. So this could be a good thing to specify. It's optional, but it, it's something that I like to specify just to get a bit of optimization from the compiler. So from here, we're just gonna replace this GCC out with this one here, and then we should be set to go. Now, one other thing that we're going to need to make sure we have set up properly is our linker file. And I have made some changes to this. So I think it's just important to show what changes I've made here and just sort of discuss that a little bit. So first off, I've set the entry to start, which is the same as what we had before. And these sections have just expanded out a little bit. So this is a text section that we have here. And inside of it, we have these code sections and the text, which is aligned at 4096. What's most important here is what's happening in the data section. In the data section, I have a dot data and an RO data. I think that our previous linker did not have an RO data inside of it. Without this section, a lot of string based definitions don't really work. So you'll actually encounter some errors when you try to use strings and there'll be really annoying errors where like, just like, you know, it will print like empty strings, for instance, which is going to be kind of hard to debug and kind of hard to figure out. So just make sure that this section is available in your linker. I also have a BSS section here, which is defined in a fairly standard way here, which has the alignment of 4096 as well. So that's the way our linker is currently set up. Now with this all set, we should be able to make our operating system. And what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and try that, make sure everything makes successfully, and then we can continue on. Uh, you can see here that it looks like I've got an, an error with uh, gdt.c. Oh, it's because I copied over an old version of my make file and it's not pointing to the right directories for these. So this is source at source gdt, gdt.c, and then I think interrupts as well is the same. Oh yeah, and I've already got that one updated. Okay, try that again. And there, oh, gdt.s as well needs to be updated to use this gdt, there we go. All right, and then, oh, I have some, some code uh, left over from something that I was testing, so. I could just remove this here and I'll just remove this here. You don't need to worry about that. That won't be in your code currently, just in mind from testing. And there we go, everything has built successfully. So what we could do is we can go ahead and test this with our QMU just to make sure that everything is working as expected. 
And if everything works out well, you should see no change in your operating system because we haven't changed anything. We've just changed our build process. So now that our cross compiler is all set and ready to go, we're gonna be able to build our operating system in a more reliable way. And we're gonna utilize that in the next video to discuss the concept of timers. So that's what we're gonna take a look at in the next video. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.